Hey, what's up, Ovi Tribe? Thanks for joining me today. Today, we are going to be doing a comparison test from a beginner standpoint. So if you're like me, a lot of you have used something like this. This is an MSR pocket rocket, um, but there's a lot of options like these, you know, 10, 12 bucks on Amazon, and you can get yourself into a gas canister style stove. And they're pretty light. Uh, this one's only two ounces, well, 2.6 ounces, so close to three ounces. If you're gonna carry it in a case though, you're about three and a half ounces in weight. So that's pretty dang light, right? But this is not quite as light. A lot of us have problems with these. We don't know how much gas is in them. You're using bigger canisters, smaller canisters. Some of you have learned how to weigh these and figure out how much gas is in them from weight. But sometimes when you're on the trail, you're still not sure. So what alternatives are there, especially for ultralight backpacking, that's where the alcohol stove comes in. So this particular one um, is a titanium alcohol stove. It weighs one ounce one ounce. Um, however, if you're gonna use an alcohol stove, you pretty much have to use a windscreen. So I have a windscreen here, that weighs a half an ounce. So together, you're still at one and a half ounces, almost half the weight of just the stove weight. The difference is here though, is I get to use alcohol instead of the, the fuel canister, and in this alcohol, I can measure exactly how much alcohol I need for each meal. I can quantity and portion control that. So the question is, is it worth using an alcohol stove? Is it really gonna save us weight? And should you switch? Well, I'm debating this for myself, and so I'm gonna bring you along on this journey and kind of weigh the pros and cons. So for starters, let's just talk weight. So for a seven day backpacking experience, if you were to use, <clears throat> if you were to use this gas canister, you can probably get seven days out of this if you're very efficient. Now the canister itself weighs in at seven and a half ounces. And even when it's empty though, you're still at four ounces. So you add these two together and you're coming up to about 10 ounces total for a seven day experience. Now with an alcohol stove in the setup that I have right here, if you were to get seven days out of this, you're about 11 and a half ounces. So the alcohol stove is actually heavier in this particular scenario. So let's say I was to do like a two day experience. With that, the alcohol stove would be much lighter. In this particular scenario, where we are out here for only one night, um, let me just look at weights here. My alcohol stove setup is five and a half ounces. Whereas this setup, if you were to only have two and a half days worth of fuel in this, like if you were able to control that, excuse me, two days worth of fuel in this, you're still six ounces, two and a half ounces. You're three ounces lighter with an alcohol stove. So especially in short trips, I would say anything under six days, the alcohol stove technically is lighter. What other pros and cons are there? Well, the other pros and cons are you can make an alcohol stove from a tin can. It's called a penny stove. You can make that at home for free. The other thing is you can make a windscreen for free at home out of tin foil. So your startup cost on this is just the cost of gas, which is gonna be less than this canister is anyways. So cost wise, you're cheaper with your weight wise, you're cheaper if you're under a week. If you're going over a week, it's debatable. However, at the end of the week, my weight on this is practically zero. Whereas no matter what, even when this is empty, you're still at four ounces. So heavier when you start, lighter when you finish on those longer trips. So again, it's kind of up for debate. So how do we decide, you know, which is better for you? Well, we kind of got the technical facts down. We understand some of that. You need about, and I don't think I covered this, but you need about two ounces of fluid per day, um, about one ounce per meal. If you're really good with this, I think you can get less with that. And I think I'm going to try to do this as I do a comparison between boiling water with this setup versus boiling water with an alcohol setup. I think there's some ways that we can get around that, try to make it a little bit more efficient and see if our boiling time can be anywhere close to that of a traditional gas canister. So with an alcohol stove, you're gonna to wanna to measure exactly your fluid ounces here. For what we're boiling, I have two pots identical to each other. We're gonna boil them at the same time. They both have exactly two cups of water, 16 fluid ounces in them. So with this, we should be able to get away with one ounce of fluid. The, the way that an alcohol stove works is you're gonna fill it up right here, you're gonna light the fire right here, and as this gets warm, it starts to atomize the alcohol that's in these, this outside cylinder and then it starts shooting out of those, basically like jets. And that's where the real heat comes from in an alcohol stove. So the hardest part that I've seen so far with the alcohol stove is it takes sometimes two, three minutes to get these to start 
um, really pumping out the heat. In two, three minutes, you could probably boil water on another setup. They say typically with an alcohol stove, you're five to six minutes to boil water on this setup. So I'm actually gonna see if we can improve that with my own process. And that's by using this little piece of tin foil that I have. Now right here underneath the stove, I'm gonna kinda create a little bowl and I'm gonna use this bowl to help prime the stove. Now any alcohol I don't can completely use, I can dump back into this bottle. It's a little bit messy, but I can reuse it at a later point. So I'm, about, I'm gonna fill this pretty much to where that ring is. So I've just about got that to where I want it. Obviously I've got the alcohol around there. I'm gonna put just a little bit of alcohol in this tin foil underneath there. What that's gonna do is it's gonna burn for just a second before it evaporates. So I'm gonna make sure this one's lit. And this is something you definitely want to potentially practice. So you can hardly see that that's lit, but it is lit, I can feel the heat. Now I'm gonna light that underneath there. And I'm gonna light this stove. You can hear this pocket rocket, it's really, really loud, especially compared to this one. Wow. So my little trick actually worked really, really well. This one is already starting to go out the sides. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the windscreen on. It may, yeah, it's really hard to see the flame, but it is already atomizing. So it went really fast, especially compared to what I was testing back in the office. So go ahead and put my windscreen on now. This one just started boiling, it looks like. Let me pop the lid open just to, oh yeah, it's rolling. So, definitely this one won. We'll let Derek pour this into his food. And uh, this one, it's going. It's hot, but it's not boiling yet. I'll turn my phone uh, timer on. We'll just see how much longer it does take before this one starts boiling. Okay, so finally there actually ran out of fuel I might not have put quite enough fuel in there um, 10 minutes longer longer than the pocket rocket um, his food is almost ready at this point mine is just starting to soak so not sure how I feel about that I think I did underfill the amount of alcohol in here which can counteract the speed at which it it works but not by 10 minutes all right so i failed at even coming close to the speed of a canister style jet uh, stove i had 10 minutes 10 extra minutes of time before my water was hitting that boiling point and then i actually ran out of fuel so i did a couple things wrong and i know a lot of you guys that are diehard alcohol stove guys you're probably going to criticize something i did this video is definitely from a beginning, beginner standpoint. So I'm definitely interested still. I'm gonna try to hone and retest this on my own just later tonight. I'll let everything cool off, get back to room temperature, put in the amount of water. The other thing is, I'm not sure if this particular stove, this is a Vargo titanium stove. You can actually flip it over, use gel or tablets on this side, flip it over, use alcohol on this side. I don't know if it's as efficient or as good as other stoves out there. This is my first and only alcohol stove. Um, my priming system worked pretty well. It lit and primed really fast, but I think I got about an ounce of fluid in there instead of an ounce and a half, like recommended from Vargo. Anyway, so I, I don't know if this stove could be a little bit better, if there's better ones out there. This is about a $35 titanium stove, $30 I think. And then with this windscreen, it's also titanium about another 10 so I'm about $40 into this setup you think it would be kind of you know really really good I'm not sure I might have to test it with some other scenarios the two things that I did think may have happened I tried to get the water exact I think that they were close I underfilled this on fuel just a little bit I should have had some left over but instead it burnt out at 12 minutes the other thing is for you guys that have run alcohol stoves I did have some condensation in here that I noticed about halfway through and I don't know if that means I was kind of choking out the fire, maybe because there's no wind, maybe I didn't need this. Um, I was just trying to hold in more heat, make it cook faster. Anyways, 
learning experience. I'm gonna try to retest this, we'll see. But overall, it took me about 12 minutes to boil that. Okay, so I did a retest and I did get much more significant number changes. So right here, 613, my water is, was boiling at six minutes and 13 seconds. That's only four minutes longer than his. So it makes a big difference to have the appropriate amount of alcohol in your stove. Even if I'm gonna blow this out and pour it back into my canister, it's worth it to have it. Um, everything else is the same. I also only used the windscreen around half of it. So that might've been a slight difference, but other than that, it was all the same. So on that test, I was only four minutes longer than the pocket rocket, but I bet I saved quite a bit of fuel and did it more efficiently. So anyways, like I say, there's a learning curve to using an alcohol stove. If you want to do it, practice at home a little bit. It's a lot of fun. I ha I've had a lot of fun messing around with it. I'll definitely be using it more, but um, six minutes to boil two cups of water. So much better. Anyways, comments, questions, anything like that, definitely reach out to us. Leave them below in the comments section. Reach out to us at outdoorvitals.com. We will give you the best support we can. Um, about this, let us know and let's, let's start a discussion down below the video. But I will definitely be using this on shorter trips. I'll keep using it, especially when maybe I'm not fast hiking and time isn't of the utmost essence. But even then, I think if you just plan around it taking that long to boil water, it's not that much longer at four minutes longer. But there's a learning curve. I thought I had it learned today. I probably boiled four cups of water in the office and then one out here and I still didn't quite get it right. So it's a little bit of a delicate thing, but um, if you watch a few more videos or learn from me, hopefully you get it right on your very first go. Anyways, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next video.